Hi guys, my name is Wild Willie, and I'm not sure if you guys know, but I have a YouTube channel, Wild Willie's Book Reviews. Today I'm interviewing author Sydney Smith, which is a author and illustrator from Halifax, Nova Scotia. So yeah. Um, maybe I'm channeling the spirit of Sherry Fitch as we speak. So this is the book that I um, that I wrote, and I wrote this while I was living in Toronto, and and Toronto is a big, big city. <coughs> Excuse me. And I was living in the middle of Toronto, like dead center of Toronto. It's it was very very busy and very exciting. So this here, I'm going to read to you. Small in the city. Uh, this this is the dedication page. There's usually always a dedication page in a picture book, and this one's dedicated to the memory of Sheila Berry, a very important person to me. Um, she was an editor at Groundwood and a very good friend. Now, I'm supposed to be quiet at this part, but I'm just letting you know it, it starts without words. But you'll find that out. Oh, I'm just going to say one more thing. It's still no words in this part, but you can tell that it's Toronto because of the colors of the, of the streetcar. I know what it's like to be small in the city. People don't see you and loud sounds can scare you and knowing what to do is hard sometimes. Taxis honk their horns, sirens come and go in every direction, construction sites pound and drill and yell and dig. The streets are always busy. It can make your brain feel like there's too much stuff in it. But, you, but I know you, you'll be all right. If you want, I can give you some advice. Alleys can be good shortcuts, but don't go down this alley. It's too dark. Three big dogs chase and bite each other in this yard. I would avoid the place if I were you. There are lots of good places to hide like under this mulberry bush or up the black walnut tree. There's a dryer vent that breathes out hot steam that smells like summer. You could curl up below it and have a nap. The fishmongers down the street are nice. They would probably give you a fish if you asked. This empty pot looks like a good place to rest, but the bushes have burrs. They might get stuck to your coat. I know you like to listen to music. In the blue house down the street, someone's always playing piano. And there's a choir that practices in the red brick church. You could perch on the window ledge. In the park, I have a favorite bench. Sometimes my friend is there. If you see her, say hi. You could sit on her lap and she will pet you. Now let's draw our attention to this picture right here. I'm supposed to be quiet at this part too, but I want to make sure that you see this poster right here and what it says on there and what that picture is. But home is safe and quiet. Your bowl is full and your blanket is warm. If you want, you could just come back. but I know you, you will be all right. Huh? What could that be? I'll let you figure it out, but it's like I didn't write this book. It's been a couple of years, so it feels like a, a little bit of time has passed since I wrote this book. and and what it felt like to be in Toronto. But I love reading this book because I get to go back to Toronto now. With Town is by the Sea, I was able to go from Toronto to Nova Scotia whenever I painted or whenever I read this book. But now I transport myself back to Toronto. And every place that's in this book, all of the pictures 
all of the places, the dogs that barked outside my house. This is the alley that was just a block away that I would pass on my way to get a coffee at the coffee shop. This is the fish mongers that were in the market where I, near my studio. This is the red brick church that was down the street from where I lived. This is the park that I would take my kids to and play called Allen Gardens. So yes, I was, I was m m making a book about where I lived. And that was maybe the best thing about this book for me is that now I get to go back. I get to go back to Toronto. I get to go back in time. I get to revisit all the places that I loved about my own neighborhood. Now this book is a little bit sad. I don't know if you quite followed it, but it is about a boy who lost a friend and he's looking for that friend and he's giving advice to that friend. And I hope that, I hope that uh, his friend returns home and I think, I think maybe they do. So, we've read a couple, we've read one book, but I've shown you a couple books. Let's show you some of the final art that I do. This is what the paintings look like. Now, the process of making art, I like to work in a way that sometimes looks like it's very easy. It looks like a couple different lines, low effort, but it's a lot of effort. It's a lot of work because what happens is I do a lot of paintings over and over and over and over again. And this is proof of that. Here we have here a painting. I don't know if you remember that painting that I showed you from the I Talk Like a River, the double gate fold. Ooh, that moment when he's in the water. Well, I did the painting and I didn't like it. So I did another painting and I didn't like that. So I did another painting. I wasn't feeling that either. And I did another and another and another and another and another. I have more of these. I have, there's stacks of these all around me. I don't know what to do with them. I throw them on the floor, but finally, finally, this is what the final, finally the final, here it is. This is what ended up in the book and it took 20 tries. That's a lot of paper. That's a lot of hair pulling and argh, yelling at the sky and uh, just saying, why me? Why can't I get this right? Now here's a tip. If you can't get a painting right, if you're drawing and it just doesn't really work out, take a break, go for a walk, do something to clear your mind. Sometimes it doesn't help to get mad at yourself, especially. Don't think of it like that. It's not you that's making these problems with the drawing. It's the drawing. It's the drawing. Walk away. Read a book. Listen to some music. Uh, go to the park. Do something that clears your mind and then come back to it and you will paint what you've been looking for, which is what happened to me. I had a little bit of space, a little bit of time. And I finally, finally got to do it right. Now, here's a couple images from Mabel Merple. This is the first, one of the first books that I, I made. And uh, I ended up using a lot of purple paint, as you can understand. But this is uh, Mabel Merple, uh, and her moguls, mo mogul, mo moguls, skiing, ski instructor, gives her valuable advice. Slow down. Mm, let's see what else I might be able to show you here. Oh, this is from the book I just read, Small in the City. This is the final image for the alleyway. I think that's the final image. I did a couple different versions of This is the final one. Some of the paintings are very small and I, and I blow them up on the computer. So this one's smaller. This is the final version for this one. Oh, this is the final version for those angry barking dogs that wouldn't be quiet and kept waking me up in the morning. So I put them in a book. Look who's barking now. So what else do we have? Oh yeah, I remember I told you to, to keep keep a picture in mind. Here's the final two um, toes in my nose. The other half is the boy with the toes in his nose. Now, 
that's that's what that one looks like. I really like that. I still really love these illustrations that I did for Sherry. And um, yeah, sometimes you have to do it over and over and over again. This is a painting of two friends on a, on a, on a swing. And I just decided to make a big, cover this whole paper with squares. You can't really see them, but I divided them off into a grid. And I just drew over and over really fast just to see. Sometimes it's fun just to do something, the same thing really fast over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. It turns your brain off. It becomes very kind of uh, like you're a machine. And then you go over and over and over and over and over and then bing, something good comes. Bing. Oh, another one. Bing. Over and over and over. Bing. And sometimes that's how you do it. You just work fast stop thinking too much. Turn that brain off. Okay, how about I draw a picture for you right now? So here we are. I am drawing a picture of the character from Small in the City. I've got my brush pen. This is what I used for most of the book and some paints and some paint water. Oh, and a brush. So let's do this. I'm going to do it a quick one, what I would normally put on the inside of a book if I was signing a book. So I start with the face, just the nose. And then I work beyond that. I put an arm in there. I just remembered they're wearing a backpack. It's been a while since I painted this. They have a hat, dark pants, and some boots. Now the boots are in walking through snow right now. Oh, and a scarf. So the scarf is going to be blowing in the wind. There we go. So that's, that's that. I'm just going to put a little bit of um, this here. This doesn't look like anything because it's a white china marker. It's for writing on dark dark surfaces, but if you put it down, it's like a crayon, it's got wax, and if you put it down, and then paint over top of it, it shows up. The water is kind of repelled by it. In this case, it's supposed to be snow. Oh. My ink is bleeding a little bit. That's all right. I'll mix that up into the into that dark background a little bit. Uh, green coat. A dark blue back back backpack. And toque. I like working really fast because it, it, it kind of um, give him some rosy cheeks. I like working fast because uh, I don't overthink things too much. I like the look of it when it's the, the paint kind of bleeds into other colors. See the way that this red is kind of just going off into the into the blue behind it. That's all right. Now I don't have the right yellow here. I think it was a brighter yellow for the boots, but that's okay. And there were some red spots in the boots. And the last thing that I would do, let's get this right. The last thing that I would do here, because they're walking in snow, is put a couple footprints. And let's sign it. Boom. There you go. There's a very quick demonstration of the child, the character from Small in the City. Let me know your questions. So when do you think you got started uh, writing? 
I got started writing pretty late in my career. I started to write um, only a couple years ago. I've been illustrating and making art for picture books and, and all types of books for a while, since I was uh, 22, so it's about 18 years, I guess, I've been at it. But I only started writing when, um, when I was in Toronto a couple years ago. That was the first try. So when do you do your writing or um, illustrating? Like, do you, for example, do your illustrating before your writing, or do you do it vice versa? Oh, that's a good question. I thought that maybe the best way to do it would be to do the writing first, but I'm such a visual thinker. I think in pictures. So the only way for me to, to see which, which way the story wants to be told is to see it with images. So I would uh, do a lot, a lot of drawings, a lot of drawings, a lot of drawings, to see what feels right for the project. And so it, with, with the book that I wrote, it ended up being a lot of pictures of snow and a lot of pictures of the city where I was living. So do you find when you are drawing, do you have certain inspirations that keep coming up? Or do you find you kind of just draw wherever your pen kind of goes? Oh, you know, that's a really good question. Um, I find that there are th themes and um, images that keep on returning. I always, for some reason, I always end up drawing kids looking out windows. I don't know why. I think it's maybe because it, it's a sort of like a, a quiet moment. I always like to think about, or I always remember the moments of my own childhood um, that were really quiet. The ones that I spent by myself, the ones that I sort of had a feeling of, of, of mindfulness or of like, I was there, I was present. It was like my brain was taking a picture of that moment and I keep on going back to those pictures of when I was young of me sitting uh, by myself in a patch of sunlight or m m me be playing by myself outside in the dirt or I mean I love I love memories about uh, uh, about my family too but the most powerful ones are the moments that I kind of I kind of stopped and and thought about who I was and what I was doing at, at like the age of you know, seven or, or, you know, age of five. <laughs> In the future, is there an author that you want to illustrate for? Oh, man, ah, I'd love to work with a lot of the authors that are dead. Um, you know, I'd love to work with them when they were alive, obviously, what I'm saying, you know, there's, um, there's a lot of people out there. Who would I like to work with who writes? Authors, authors, authors. Um, I'll have to get back to you on that one. It's, it's, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I can't, I can't. Julie Foliano, she's great. Um, who else? There's a lot of people. Mac Barnett is someone, he wrote, um, he wrote some amazing, he's still, he's, one of the hottest writers in the in the in the business today, and I am actually doing a book with him. So that's a bit of a dream come true, is doing a, a Christmas book of you know. Uh, surprisingly, it's going to be about Santa. <laughs> Do you have any advice for other people wanting to become writers or illustrators? I think. It's hard. It's hard to give advice at this at, at to to young people about art because I feel like they have it. They really know what it takes to be a good illustrator. You sort of forget it when you're older. You forget to have fun and you forget to play and you forget to just um, not worry about it too much. Especially with picture books, a lot of it is about just um, just about. Um, telling a story in a way that you want to see it being told in a, in a way that maybe you haven't seen being told before. There's, there's nobody telling you that you can't do anything that way. It's a lot, that's a great, great um, place to, to work because everybody's so encouraging. So just um, follow your ideas all the way through. You know, they're all very, very good ideas. And um, don't forget to play. Don't be so hard on yourself. 
don't, you know, if something doesn't look quite right, it's all right. You're on the way to getting, to becoming a better, always on the way to becoming a better artist or writer. It's just, you, you know, you, you, if you stop, then that's where you're, you're, you'll, you'll be. You'll always be at that level. But if you keep on going, you're going to get better and better and better and better. And it's pretty, pretty soon, um, you'll be the artist that you've always wanted to be. Well, hopefully, you'll be the artist that you've always dreamed you could be. I think I'm there right now. Uh, fans of your writing, I think, would want to know if you have any books maybe coming out in the future. Uh, yeah, well, after the most recent book that came out, I took a pause. Uh, I moved. Um, there happened to be a pandemic, uh, so everything kind of shut down. And I sort of shut down, too. So I've been working very, very slowly on a book, another book that I've written and, and illustrated. And it's, it's, uh, it's a tough one. It's a really hard project of mine. So I'm, I'm trying to do my best with it. So I, we'll see what it... Right now, it has a working title called This New Morning. And it's about uh, a family who moves from the country to the city. That's it. So, yeah, thank you so much for your time. And, yeah. Yeah, thank you so much, William. Those are amazing questions, and it was great to talk to you.